For centuries, the Shroud of Turin has fascinated believers and skeptics alike. This 14-foot linen cloth kept in the Turin Cathedral is claimed by many to be the actual burial shroud of Jesus Christ. Imprinted on it is a faint, mysterious image, one that some believe to be the face of Jesus himself, but could this be true? What do we know about it? According to the Gospels, after the crucifixion, Jesus' body was wrapped in a linen burial cloth by Joseph of Arimathea, the same man who owned the tomb where Christ was laid to rest. This shroud is mentioned again when Peter finds the empty tomb. Luke 24.12 tells us, But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. After these events, the shroud vanishes from the biblical narrative, only to reappear centuries later. Historical records suggest that the shroud might have traveled to Constantinople, but it disappeared from history until it reemerged in 1354 in the hands of a knight, Geoffroy de Chardigny. How he came into possession of it remains a mystery. From there, the shroud's journey is well documented, arriving at Turin Cathedral in 1578, where it has remained ever since, even having its purpose-built chapel. In 1988, a piece of the shroud was subjected to carbon dating by three independent teams of scientists. The world watched with bated breath as the results came in. The date? Somewhere between 1260 and 1390 A.D., medieval times, not ancient. Could this be the final nail in the coffin for the shroud's authenticity? Not quite. Despite the carbon dating results, questions remain. No one knows how the image on the cloth was made. There's no pigment or dye. The fibers themselves are discolored creating an image that appears to be a photographic negative. In 1898, when a photographer reversed the image, something remarkable was discovered. The luminance correlates with the distance from the body to the cloth, like a 3D image. Nothing like this has ever been seen on something so old. If it was a medieval forgery, the feat itself would be a miracle. Then there are the physical details. The wounds on the figure are consistent with Roman crucifixion methods and the specifics described in the Bible. Marks from the crown of thorns, a stab wound in the side, lacerations on the back, and bruises on the shoulders. Even if this isn't Christ, it appears to be the victim of a real crucifixion. Recent analyses have revealed high levels of creatinine and ferritin on the cloth, biomarkers associated with severe trauma. But there's more. Pollen analysis suggests that some of the plant pollen on the shroud is native to the Jerusalem area. The weave pattern is also more common in the ancient Middle East than in medieval Europe. And when we look at Byzantine icons, such as the 6th century Sinai Pantocrator, the similarities are striking. Before this icon, there was no standardized way to depict Christ in art. So what about that carbon dating? Some argue that the sample tested in 1988 was either contaminated or taken from a section that was repaired in the Middle Ages. If the shroud was contaminated or if the sample wasn't properly cleaned, the results could be flawed. Well, first of all, the people who did the test violated mm. the protocols that were called for in the 1978 STIRP investigation. Mm. So in 1988, <clears throat> they, did, they took one sample of the shroud from a very controversial corner that had been burned and then later mended by mm. some nuns with a technique called invisible uh, mending. And they took the, the one uh, strand for the sample and cut it into three pieces. Mm. The original protocol called for seven different spots on the linen shroud, none of which were controversial parts. Mm. Like you know, right when you burn something, it adds con carbon content, including C14 content as well. Um, and so, and then you have it mended by a, a, a thread from another era. This is going to throw everything Obviously, completely right? wackadoodle. Why they chose that particular <clears throat> thread is unknown. I could attribute some bad faith to it, but I guess I shouldn't. But the main thing... And now there's something new. A recent x-ray analysis used a new technique to study the aging of the linen's flax cellulose. The findings are astonishing. The breakdown of the cellulose matches that of other 2,000-year-old samples, not medieval ones. If the shroud were only 700 years old, as the 1988 test suggested, the cellulose would have to have aged at an impossibly rapid rate, requiring conditions very close to the maximum values registered on the earth. Whether or not you believe in the shroud's authenticity, there's no denying its mystery. Modern science has yet to fully explain or replicate it. Perhaps it never will. But one thing's for sure. 
This ancient cloth continues to captivate, challenge, and inspire us, as it has for centuries. Thank you for watching Powerful Primates. Our aim simple to share stories we find fascinating. Thank you for joining us on that journey. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, bon voyage.